there's a school in Roanoke that's not only educating the students, it's also trying to lift them out of poverty. 10 News anchor John Carlin spent a day at the Academy, and he joins us in the studio with more on this innovative approach to education. Yeah, thanks, Rachel. T tonight, a look at this experiment in education that seems to be working. The Academy is a place where the students learn the ABCs while their parents learn how to climb, as Rachel said, out of poverty. I spent a day recently at the Academy. <laughs> These kids are students at a Roanoke school you've probably never heard of. It's the Academy, a privately funded experiment to educate kids in a way that breaks the cycle of poverty. About 10% of our population is dependent upon government welfare programs to make a living. That was a very stunning statistic for me and my wife, and we wanted to do something about it. John McLeod is a successful businessman who says he wanted to give back in a meaningful way. So he repurposed one of his real estate holdings to create this school. As of April 2024, there are 63 students, students who come from families where there is little hope of escaping the pole of poverty and life in the welfare system. Over six years, this is our sixth year now, we're graduating our first class this year in the fifth grade, and uh, we've had about one-third success in getting parents out of poverty, families out of poverty in that six years, but this year we're more like two-thirds. We're much better at it now. There's a lot of things to do here. And there's a lot of things to learn every day. We're having a lot more success with it. And uh, we're real proud of that. Three. Three. Two, one. Two, and then one. A part of the success, of course, is the small class size and personal interactions with teachers. So just keep it up. Just keep it up. But the real key is what you don't see. Parents of these kids receive training, too. They must have a real desire to get off of welfare, out of public housing, and learn how to function in a job that pays well enough they can be self-sufficient. Not easy. We have children here, John. They're in the fourth generation of welfare. And think about that. That's, you know, grandma, grandma, aunts and uncles. That's a tough environment to want to get out of. Well, the other thing we've learned is if you want to leave that environment, you get somewhat ostracized by your families. You're better than me. What are you doing? You're leaving, you're going to a different neighborhood. That's a lot of pressure, and we didn't understand that when we started. McLeod says people on welfare in Roanoke receive about $35,000 worth of living expenses a year. So to get parents off welfare, they need to be able to find jobs that pay better. Let's say you make $15 an hour. Well, that's only $31,200 a year, less than the welfare package. $1,683 an hour, just for reference, is $35,000 a year, the same as the welfare package. $20 an hour gets you to $41,000 and change, a little bit better than $35, but maybe not enough to make you want to work that hard. But $25 an hour gets you to $52,000 a year. Now you can live a better life and break the cycle of poverty. It's evolved in, from a, a safety net to a cobweb. It's very easy to get in and very difficult to get out. Go and add those up. Our goal is to make sure that we are taking care of our parents and taking care of our children and making sure this is the best part of our children's day. Students at the academy, 95% of which come from single mother households, eat better than average school lunches. So this is a chicken stuffed with cheddar and broccoli. In addition to reading, writing, and arithmetic, they get life training, lots of field trips, and visits from workers who talk about their different jobs. It's little things that we do in life skills. We teach them, you know, gratitude, how to give gratitude, how to show it, write a thank you note. You know, the art and writing thank you notes instead of, you know, anybody can write an email. But to take the time to learn how to write a thank you note. While students often thrive here, it can be more challenging for the parent, usually a mother. When a parent doesn't do the things that they need to do to get out, what happens to them? What happens to them in the program? Well, unfortunately, we have limited funding here. so. If we have a parent that doesn't want to become self-sufficient, that's clear in our process, 
They get lots of counseling and lots of touches. Uh, we have to ask them to leave, and unfortunately, we have to ask their child to leave as well. That's right. If you don't make the grade at school and at home, you're out. McLeod doesn't want another cobweb. The McLeod Family Foundation pays for most of this. The rest comes from donors. It costs about $15,000 per child. And so with that, about 10 of that is going towards the school and five of that is going towards family outcomes. That's roughly the same amount that the local school system spent. Do you think this works? Absolutely. As the first class of fifth graders graduates this spring, transferring to public middle schools, McLeod estimates two out of three families will have transitioned off of welfare. Several have purchased homes and have good paying jobs. It's only been six years, but the academy appears to be a worthwhile experiment. This school is special to me. That's what our real mission is. If we're successful in getting families out of poverty, we know the kids in the school now are going to have a much better life, but more importantly, their kids are almost certainly going to be middle class or upper middle class when they grow up. And we've, we've changed the direction of that family and a lot of family members. And that's our real mission. That's what we're trying to accomplish. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. And I understand the first class of fifth graders are going to be graduating soon. Yeah, they are. They're going to go out into, into the middle schools. And, you know, but like they've got at least four families that know yeah. where, where the mothers have gone from, you know, living on welfare to have mm -hmm. purchased homes. And now that, you know, they've got a good shot at sort of breaking out of that, you know, that cycle that we talked sure. about, that cycle of poverty. Yeah. How incredible would it be to duplicate this all across our area? And I actually asked him that yeah. question. I said, is this, you know, that's the word you use scale is just something you could yeah. scale and he said well if this model works then you know they'd be happy to work with other organizations foundations you know whatever it would take yeah. right now you know they're still they're still tweaking their model but uh, it would be nice if there could be more of these and and all of them could be successful absolutely teaching the skills that we need right that just they won't get anywhere basic else. Basic life, you know, like a lot of the parents have never had a relationship with a bank. Yeah. They've never had a credit card. They don't know how to get a car loan. They don't know how to get a car. Yeah. And, and so they, they're teaching the parents those types of things as well. That's wonderful. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, John. Mm -hmm. We appreciate it. It's a great Glad story.